Veal rollatini that rolled veal with cheese oozing out of it, spinach salad with crispy bacon nuggets in it. Does that take you back to eating in Italian restaurants about 20 years ago? Well, it's still very good food. And today I will show you how to make it. I came here, I was 12 years old and had the opportunity to become fully American, to understand fully the American culture, to always maintain my Italian culture very strongly. And I think what gives me the strength of communicating to you and is that I have this passion for food, but I also have this understanding of two cultures and I bring them together through food at our table. Che bellezza! Buongiorno, benvenuti. Welcome to my kitchen. Welcome to my Italian-American kitchen. Today we're going to make veal rollatini and spinach salad. Those dishes I made in 1971 when I opened my first restaurant. People loved them then and I still make it periodically and I even make it at home for the family at times and people still love it. Veal, everybody loves veal. And these are just veal rollatini. We'll make some, some nice veal cutlets. We'll sort of tenderize them a little bit and stuff them with some provola, with some tomatoes and some seasoned breadcrumbs, and then in the oven. Simple, not much sauce, but they'll be juicy in themselves. Now, um, veal scallopini, try to get veal uh, from, from your butcher. Uh, a nice piece of tin veal, usually from the leg, the center of the leg is fine. The best, actually, part of the veal itself is actually the filet. The filet where, when it's an adult, it becomes the filet mignon. That is the softest. So if you get the filet of veal and you cut a little slice and you pound it, it is the softest. But otherwise, from the leg, you can get some really good scallopini. And then, of course, you can tenderize it a little bit just with, with a mallet, like I'll do right here. Give it a little space to spread. And just um, if it's tender, uh, if the veal is not really tough and you can sense it, you know, by touching the veal, you can sense it and seeing the veins, you can use the flat part and just sort of pound it going on the outside, towards the outside and is it, it's, well, it's a little tough. Let's go to the, once you begin to use the teeth, you might break the cellophane paper and then you might have to change it each, each time. When you are sort of pounding meat or if you're working on a board it, with anything in the case, take a, a kitchen towel, wet it, and sort of really wring it dry and put it underneath the board so that you have that sort of buffer between the board and the hard surface underneath. Okay, I think we have enough here. Okay, let me keep this covered. Uh, we'll fill in it, in, in, the, in the roll, we'll fill just with a little tomato uh, tomato strips and provola, provola strips. So let me just blanch the tomato so I can peel it. In this case, just cut the stem off and then just sort of mark an X here. Uh, dunk it in boiling water. Let me get some iced water here. And the change of temperature, of course, between the hot and the cold will just make the skin come out. Well, that is sort of blanching. Let me cut the provola. I'm going to fish out the tomato because the tomato is ready. So tomato, I'm going to just drop it in the ice water and I'll get back to it later. So you see that it has the Sometimes this, this light wax coating, uh, sometimes you, you can, if you're lucky enough to find uh, one little one like this, which is really wonderful, but otherwise they have big ones and you can buy pieces of the provola. And as it ages here, it gets stronger and stronger. Sometimes provola can be, can be strong and you might not like it. So try to get a fresher, fresh provola for this dish, dish especially, unless you really like pecan things. So 
let's address the tomato. Just peel out. The skin comes right off, as you can see. Let's clean the inside. Cut those in long strips. Okay, we will season the breadcrumbs. You know, the breadcrumbs sort of binds everything uh, uh, in, in the filling, and it really retains some of the moisture from the meat and become quite flavorful and crunchy. This I have, what I have in here is, let me, let me show you. I have crushed some garlic cloves and just set them in good olive oil for 20 minutes ago, about 20 minutes ago I set it in the olive oil and it'll infuse the whole olive oil with the garlic smell. So this way I don't have to put garlic in the breadcrumbs, but they'll be really permeated by the garlic flavor just by this uh, infusion here. A little bit of salt. Peperoncino, I kind of like that. Parsley. I think we're gonna need some more oil here, okay. Now what I want is, let me get my hands in there so I'll get where I want quickly. See, I want just enough the, the, the bread to be uh, seasoned uh, with, with the oil and, and the parsley, but I don't want it wet. I don't want it soaking with, with, with the olive oil. A little bit of Salt, I know it needs a little. Okay, and we are ready to assemble the veal. Okay, and you, I'm looking at it, you know, which way would I like it better? I'm gonna roll it this way, because this is sort of a wider piece, or maybe, maybe not, maybe I'll do it this way. So when I close it, it'll be closed all across rather than a small piece sticking out. Okay, a little bit of salt, and let's put the breadcrumbs. Not too much, just enough. Some provola, now we said we're gonna roll it this way, right? Two pieces of provola, two pieces of tomato, and we'll just, let me just cut it, cut this away so it's, okay. And this is the, the side, you might not even need the toothpick, but I'm just going to put a tooth, toothpick to to hold it like that. And if it breaks a little bit, it's fine also. You know, in cooking, it comes all together. Now let me just prep what you want, a nice sort of baking pan. This is uh, a good one, sort of a heavy, so you get the heat from the bottom because there's not gonna be much sauce in it. Uh, basically just the oil and the cheese itself. And the, uh, the veal will cook through almost in, in, in a sort of a, almost a dry baking. It's not, it's, it's not that usually roasting that you're used to with sauce, with juices, with this, with that. But it really comes out moist. I put the garlic here. I'm gonna save some oil to just top it with. The rest again, I'm gonna choose this side. And you know, these breadcrumbs are, are so useful for many different things. Let's say that you have just a filet of flounder or something, you just wanna make a quick meal. You do the same thing, just like that. You lay it with a little bit of oil, you put this breadcrumbs on top, drizzle it with a little bit of oil and put it in the oven and it bakes wonderfully. You know, uh, in, in the restaurant it was called oreganata, uh, this is this kind of breadcrumbs just with a little bit of maybe oregano, dry oregano crushed into it. Let me fix them up. 
you want heat to come all around, so we'll sort of not squeeze them in too much, give it some space, season it a little more. Drizzle with a little bit of, of the oil. Top it with the bread. Just a drizzle of the oil. And we'll put this in a hot oven, in a 425 degree hot oven for about uh, 20 to 30 minutes. Well, the rollatinis just came out of the oven nice and hot, so let's make this spinach salad and then let's enjoy. Uh, I've been cleaning the spinach salad. Let me just finish this last batch here. You know, when you make a salad uh, and uh, uh, you wash it, uh, it's important that it really sort of dries off and that you drain it uh, in a sense because uh, it waters down your dressing, but also the, 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 the dressing does not adhere to the salad. So if you have a spinner, that's fine. But sometimes um, what, what, what you can do is just you put a towel and you take your salad and you put it in. And let me, let me, let me show you, actually. This has been sort of dried, but you do like this. And if you don't have a spinner of your, and you just go like this. My grandmother used to do this. And you continue doing it until it's done. And then you put it in your bowl. OK, this is nice and dry. I have the, the pan going. It's a little hot. So I like nice sort of pieces. Some people like really small pieces of bacon. Some people like thick, like, like some of shoestring potatoes, you know, that kind of. Uh, I mean, whatever, whatever you know you you enjoy, but I like a nice piece of bacon when I when I bite into my salad. Yeah. This is a lot of bacon here. Let me just chew some off. Yeah, I think that's enough. Um, the mushroom just, if it's a little open, just sort of clean this. Uh, the, the stems uh, are not good for the salad unless they're really very tiny, but save them for something else. So if you have a towel like that and it's a little wet, which I did already, and you just clean them off like that, uh, the mushroom will be fine. When you're cutting, I mean, the simplicity, just keep your fingers away, get your knuckles towards the knife so that will sort of guide your knife not to go on your, on your finger. So always like that with the knife. Okay, let me put that right in here. Let's see how this is. I like the bacon crisp. And I want those sort of little caramelization in the dressing, but let me get rid of this excess fat here. I mean, you can leave a little bit, but I kind of like to do it this way, then just add a little bit of the oil. I'm going to close the, OK, and Add the vinegar right in here. OK, the dressing is just about ready. I just want to sort of uh, burn out a little bit of that um, intensity of the vinegar. Just let it come out. Let me salt the, the salad itself. All right. OK. this. Looks good, all those little speckles. Oh. Mm. 
Great. Now, of course, you dress the salad the last minute because it is a warm dressing and because, you know, salad wilts anyway. That's why you wait for the rollatini. Let me just put a little bit of fresh pepper. You know, this, this salad sort of fell out of favor, uh, but uh, 20 years ago, it used to be such a big seller in, in the restaurants. Um, and uh, I kind of, I really liked it. I really like it, and I still serve it in my restaurants, you know, some versions uh, of it. Um, I serve one like that with shrimps, uh, and it really becomes almost, you know, like a meal, a lunch, uh, a full, full lunch meal. Now, the rollatini, as I was telling you, you know, it doesn't make a lot of sauce. You don't need sauce. Uh, it's crunchy. The cheese itself is really very oozy and tasty. Let's see, which one do I want? Mm. One, two. Okay, I think that's enough for the portion. So I think what I would do is I would have a nice meal just like this. So here I am again at the difficult chore of tasting for you. But this looks wonderful. All right. Mm -mm. I want to, let's see, I wanted to show you how it looks. It's moist and uh, it, it, the veal really remains moist. You think that sometimes, you know, just like this dry would dry out, but it doesn't. It really doesn't. Mm. Good. <clears throat> I'm enjoying it. And some spinach salad. Mm. It goes very well together. It goes good. The spinach salad, I like my spinach salad just with a little extra acidity. I know you're not supposed to talk with your mouth full, but I got to convey to you as it happens. Um, I like a little acidity in my spinach salad, so a little extra because of the bacon. And together, it really, really goes wonderful. And of course, a little sip of vino. makes it all complete. Now, to make it complete, you would think dessert. But you know, Italians are not big dessert eaters. So I'm going to show you how to make a cookie, a pignoli uh, almond paste cookie, very typical in Sicily specifically, where the almonds are the best. Uh, and that's going to be just the perfect ending to this dish. Pignoli cookies, biscotti di pignoli, uh, wonderful cookies, everybody. You, you, you've had them. You've, every Italian bakery has them. It's those little sort of rounds with all the pignoli nuts, and these are the pignoli nuts all over it. It's great because it's a cookie that's a flourless cookie. So uh, what you need is almond paste to begin with, and I'm just opening a can of almond paste here. I opened both sides, and I'm just going to press it right out into the processor. Now these things are good. You know, you know what, what you can use them for if you make raviolis or if you're cutting pasta? They make great like cookie cutters. Just, and, and it's nice because you have, you know, really some, something to, to, so when you're making those ravioli or whatever, or even cookies, they're great like this. Let me just break. So this is almond paste. Uh, it's just sugar and ground almonds and uh, some, some egg whites. And the cookies ultimately are flourless. And they take an abundant amount of sugar, but that's, I guess, what makes them good. Egg whites, not the yolks. Save the yolks to make that pasta. And you have the can to cut the, the ravioli. So you're all ready to go.
there's nothing major happening in that you really have to work, but you do have to sort of blend in completely the sugar and the egg whites. And the mixture will be a little sticky at the end. Okay, okay. Yeah. Let me just, you could work it right out of here, but given the blade, let me just pull it out. Ready to shape them. Make yourself a plate of the pignoli, just spread them out. You don't have to, usually pignoli or any nuts that you work with when baking are toasted, but in this case, they'll toast on top of the cookie. So, so just a little bit of wet water and you shape them and make it in a bowl. I want not too big in a bowl. Just roll the bowl right into the pignoli nuts. You just set them on a baking sheet lined with paper, parchment paper. And let me just put a little bit more. Make them all the same size. Now, they'll bake about 15 minutes in 350 degree oven. I like mine chewy uh, because, you know, there's no flour. There's not really much that needs cooking. The macaroon, the macaroon is chewy is very good and I like them that way. If you like them crunchy and hard, then just lower the temperature a little bit, make it 300, and extend the baking time a little bit, maybe 10 more minutes or so. And then you just sort of, just lightly roll them, because otherwise they'll fill themselves up with pignoli and you'll get too many pignolis. Okay, let's see. They spread out a little bit, so in the line of three, just a little bit of water. Okay. So let me finish this one. Okay, we finished the first tray and you can continue making uh, the rest, but we'll put it in the oven, a hot oven, and again, 350 degrees and not too long, 15 minutes and they become delicious and chewy and that's the way I like them. Well, the cookies are baked and they have cooled off. And you know, at my house, there's always so many people, but today it's just you and me. And I'm just gonna sit down and relax, enjoy my rollatini, and then have one of these wonderful cookies. And I told you how I like them nice and chewy and exactly as they are. Wonderful. Well, I'm gonna set them down and, you know, what do we say at my house? tutti a tavola a mangiare. But it's not tavola today. You're in my kitchen, so tutti nella mia cucina a mangiare. <laughs>